Welcome back to Paper to Threads book binding series. This is our second installment. We're going to be talking about book binding terminology, um, just certain definitions of common phrases you might hear along the lines while we're uh, binding and doing certain tutorials. So the first thing we're going to talk about today is paper grain. Most pieces of paper have a grain direction. And a grain direction or a paper grain is the direction in which the fibers aligned in machining. So while the machine was creating the paper, it pushes it in a certain direction and most of the fibers line up that way. And that can be determined a number of ways. This is the easiest way for me. If your fibers are all lined up this way, then it's going to be easier to bend with that grain. So if my fibers are long grain, which is with the length of the paper, it's going to not resist as much. You can see that bend is taken quite easily. But if I were to turn the paper and try to fold it on the short end, you can see there's quite a bit more resistance there. It does not want to bend as easily as this direction because this is the, the direction the grain flows. So if I were to bend this and fold it and press it, I would get a nice crisp fold and it would last longer. When you're opening and closing your book or turning your pages, it's going to turn with the fibers. If I were to turn it this way and fold it and crease it, more than likely the edges are gonna buckle a little and it may be a little unsightly and over time opening and closing against the fibers will break and tear the fibers. Now this is not important to everyone binding a book so if this is not an important step to you if you don't um, if you don't care if it's not a project you want to last a long time if it's just maybe just a throwaway journal it may not be a, a big deal to you. For me anything that I bind I consider the paper grain so that it'll last longer. Also, all grain should run parallel to the spine. So with this book, say this was a closed bound book, it doesn't. This spine, the grain, would need to run parallel to the spine. So that when you open and close, the wear and tear is going to hold up better against those fibers. So next we're going to talk about a case. When you make a book, usually there's two main parts. You have your case, now ignore the inside here. Say you just had this big piece here. This is the case. This refers to the book cover, consisting of your boards, which are inside, and the covering material. So this whole piece would be considered your case. And it is made separately to hold your text block. So a text block. This is a text block. This is the main block of signatures, fly leaves, end sheets, your spine covering, which I haven't put on yet on this one completely, um, that have been bound together and placed for the center of your book or your whatever you're going to be writing or drawing on. This is a text block. This is usually, if it's a case book or a hardback book, this was bound first. You create your case, and then you would paste this right inside your case, and it would close and give you your book. So this is a text block. Now next we're going to talk about signatures. What is a signature? A signature is two or more sheets of paper stacked and folded together usually anywhere from two to ten sheets of paper. You can see here, let me see if I can hold this up so you can see. Can you see the separations here? There's one, two, three, four, five. So I have five signature sets in this text block. So when you're getting ready to make this book, you would take each sheet of paper it would be, you know, this long, and you would fold it, and you would nestle each sheet inside the other. 
until you had, you know, how many ever sheets you wanted. Like I said, anywhere from two to ten. I usually don't do more than five to eight. The more sheets you have, the bulkier it gets. If you're just doing a, like a three-hole pamphlet stitch, you can do as many as you want. Just keep in mind that they are nestled together, so the thicker it gets, the shorter the inside page will be compared to the outside page. So this is a signature. This is one, two, three, four, five pieces of paper in the signature. Now we're going to talk about your end sheet or the piece of paper that is going to join your text block and your case. Your end sheet will serve two purposes. It is one piece of paper. One side will be the paste down or the piece that is pasted down to your case or cover. The other half of the paper will be your fly leaf or the piece of paper that protects the first few pages in your text block. And you'll have an end sheet on the front of your book and you'll have an end sheet in the back of your book. Now we're going to talk about the anatomy of a book. Just the different parts of what they're called because we may be going over this in a tutorial so you would know. This is your spine, and if you open this book up, you can see this is the head or the top of the book. This would be your tail, and this side is called the foredge. This is any part of your book that is opposite or parallel to the spine. So the top is opposite of where the book would be stored upright, and the tail is just your bottom. On the inside, we have our end sheet. This is the hinge where the board meets the text block and opens and closes. On the inside we have our text block with our signatures and is followed up by lastly the second end sheet. Now you'll also notice here, let's see if I can point this out, do you see inside this little black and white piece here? This is a headband and this is put in to protect your spine. And these are optional. Uh, I always find it quite nice to have them in there just for a little protection on the, the edge of your spine. So that is the anatomy of our book. Uh, some of the things you might hear me go over during our tutorials. We also might talk about, now when I talked about the spine coverings, I said this one wasn't completely finished yet. I would sew this together with my bands and then what I would do is apply a super or mull and this is a super or mull. What it is is a light open weave fabric used to reinforce or strengthen your text block. So you would cut this to size for your spine here and then you would apply the glue to the mull and put it on your spine. And what that's going to do is just reinforce your stitching, reinforce the strength of the spine. Now for a super or a mole, this particular one I did get from hollanders.com. You can use um, muslin, uh, a really light woven piece of fabric that you could find at a craft store, or you could use something more along the lines of this. I've also seen people use Bristol, or well, I've seen people use paper. I haven't personally tried that myself, but you could if you had like a stronger um, cardstock or a Bristol board, something along those lines. I prefer the Super. To me, it just, um, it works better for me. Now, I know we touched on this um, in the tools and supplies video, but again, PVA, we will be using for um, any of the coverings or case bound books where you're pasting in the text block this is what you're going to want to use this is an acid free glue particularly made for book binding when it dries it's going to dry clear and flexible so it's just going to last longer and extend the life of your book so i would uh 
purchased something along the lines of a PVA or um, the actual name is polyvinyl acetate for your book binding. Now, all of this is, you know, completely up to you and how you do it. These are just things and um, tips that help me when I'm binding. And I also, I take notes upon notes upon notes and do research and look up definitions. And so these, you know, may not completely be uh, what everybody does, but this is what works for me. And hopefully this will help you in the tutorials to come. This is a case bound. And this book here is a pamphlet stitch with the exposed stitching. And this is a hardcover. Um, I hope to do a tutorial on something like this as well. So hopefully we'll have the simple pamphlet stitches, the more advanced with a hardback cover, and then we will work up to a linen bound case book, just like this one. Okay, if you have any questions, comments, leave them below. I am also may link some video references or website references for telling paper grains because there are there are a few more ways to tell paper grain other than just bending there are methods used with water also when you purchase if you purchase a big ream of paper or the paper that i like this mohawk super fine when i purchase in the big sheets a lot of the times the manufacturer will indicate which way the grain runs if it's long or short also your davy board will have a grain all that will have a grain and they will indicate which way your grain runs. The only way, uh, the only paper I can think of right now that wouldn't particularly have a grain is like a handmade paper where um, you're making it yourself. And you know, a lot of times those fibers aren't machined like a, a manufactured paper. So the fibers will just rest on top of one another and just uh, set up wherever they lie. So I hope this is helpful. If you like this video, Give us a thumbs up, say hello, come join us again, subscribe. Thank you for watching.